Godot is awesome, but it is a game engine. So if you try and push it to do things like web scraping, displaying notifications, Bluetooth, or machine learning, you're bound to hit some walls. Luckily, we can achieve these things by leveraging the power of Python. And I'm not talking about the Godot Python library, but rather running scripts in the background while your game runs in the foreground. To get started, we'll want to create a folder within our game's directory to hold our Python files. This folder will also contain our Python virtual environment. If you don't know what this is, it essentially packs Python and any libraries you're using into a file so you can use your scripts from anywhere. To create one, we'll need the terminal. If you don't use the terminal often, don't be scared, I promise this is very easy. We'll first navigate to the directory we just created using the cd command. Then we'll type in the command python-mvenv, followed by whatever you'd like to name your environment. In my case, I just named it venv. And that's all you have to do to create a virtual environment. You should see yours sitting in the directory. Here I've created a simple Python function that sends a notification to the macOS notification center. You can certainly use a script that runs by itself, but here I'd like to send arguments from within my Godot game. To do this, I'll want to import the sys library. Then I'll use sys's argv function to capture the arguments passed to the command line in an array, and then pass those to our notify function. Within our Godot script, we'll want to create variables containing the paths to our interpreter, which lies within our virtual environment, and the script we want to run. Here I'm using the project settings globalized path function to get the global paths of both. This works great in the editor, but will not work on export. To do that, we'll need to get the directory containing our exported executable using this line here. Then we'll just add the relative paths from our interpreter and script to the global executable directory. I'll also add a simple if statement that changes the interpreter and script paths to what we had previously if we're running in the editor. To run the script, we'll use Godot's os.execute function, which executes a file at the given path with the arguments passed as an array of strings. Here we'll pass the interpreter path as the file to be executed, followed by an array containing the script path as the first argument, followed by any arguments we'd want to pass to that script. My recording software blocks notifications, but after we run the script, we can see the notification in the macOS Notification Center. In order to get it to work on an exported version, first export the game normally. I'll copy our Python files directory, navigate to the directory of our game's executable, and then paste it there. On a Mac, I just right-click on the Gamer app, and then select Show Package Contents. The executable directory is just called macOS, and I'll paste our Python files right in there. Now when we run the game, it'll locate the directory we just pasted into, and have access to our interpreter and script. Here I'll do just that, and you can see that our notification pops up in the notification center. Now while this works great for simple scripts, what if we want a more complex program that is running continuously in the background and communicating with Godot? Here's an example where I'm web scraping the YouTube live chat and communicating that information to my Godot game. To achieve this, I use Python's built-in socket library to send and receive UDP packets between Godot and Python. Each packet contains a byte-encoded JSON that contains the information I'd like to send. Back in Godot, I create a UDP server class to communicate with the Python script. I use the os.execute function much like I did before, except this time I set the third parameter, blocking, to false so it doesn't halt our script, and I also capture the returned process ID in a variable and it append it to an array. Then when I quit the game, I use the os.kill function to kill the Python process. I can check if I'm about to quit the game using the notification virtual function and checking if what equals main loop notification quit request. In the process function, I continually pull the server to see if a packet is available. If one is, I get the packet, convert it to a string, and then handle it as a JSON. We can respond to our Python script using the put packet function. We just need to ensure and handle this in our Python script. Finally, we can save a reference to our Python script by capturing peer in a global variable. Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please drop a like below and potentially subscribe to my channel. Also, maybe check out one of these two videos, you know, whatever floats your boat. So thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.